Son of God, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, Amen. Today we're celebrating the Feast of St. Francis, which actually is really observed tomorrow. But I didn't think we all wanted to gather again tomorrow to do this, so here we are. While we can't be together and bring our beloved pets and our tender stuffed animals for a blessing today, we have a great little video to show at the end and we will offer prayers for all our beloved pets during coffee hour. But there's far more to the story of Francis than the blessing of animals or even the prayer that was attributed to him that we just sang. One day after he had given himself to Christ, Francis was walking along the streets of Assisi and he came across the church of San Damiano. The church had been abandoned for years and it was lying in utter ruins. But Francis went in as best he could and knelt to pray in front of the crucifix that still hung over the altar there. And while he did that, he heard Christ speak to him. Francis, the voice said, calling him by name, go, rebuild my house. As you see, it is all being destroyed. Now, if you have ever heard Christ speak to you, you will know that Francis was pretty stunned by all of this. At first, he thought the words meant that he was actually to be rebuild this church itself. And he hauled stones and mortar in and began to rebuild. But in the midst of his labors, he also realized that was more to Christ's request of him. He was to renew his own heart and rebuild his soul as well. So as he rebuilt a church, he rebuilt himself. I'm guessing it was a slow process, with lots of prayers, lots of challenges, probably a step or two backwards and more prayers. He probably spent hours in front of that cross where he heard Christ speak to him, hungering for more waiting for another word, trying to understand more of what was asked of him. In a letter to her sister, Francis' friend and confidant Claire wrote how he, and no doubt she, because she was his friend, how they did this work. And she wrote, gaze upon Christ, consider Christ, contemplate Christ. Imitate Christ. Those four steps were a way of life to them, a new way of life. Both Francis and his brothers and Claire and her sisters must have spent countless hours gazing and contemplate, uh, contemplating the image of Christ on that cross. In this way, they all renewed the house of God. For Francis and Claire, this process meant that they were to imitate or become like the image they gazed upon. They were to love what God loved, care for what God cared for, and show mercy for those for whom God cared and showed mercy to himself. It meant the church he rebuilt, but it also meant them and those around them. And it meant the whole of creation. It is a beautiful cross, by the way, that now hangs in the chapel at the Basilica of St. Clair in Assisi. And people sit in the pews behind it for long, long periods of time, offering up prayers for themselves and for the world. We always think that the only thing St. Francis should be remembered for is our annual animal blessing. It is a wonderful way to experience joy. And back in the day, way, way back in the day, when we used to gather in church and have real animal blessings, I saved a bird from a dog's mouth one Sunday during the pet blessing. A child was, had come up and had her little bird on her, perched on her finger, blessed, and was walking down the side aisle and just as she was walking back, being a child down low, a dog sitting in the pew in front of me was just at 
the bird's level. And as the child walked back with the bird on her arm, the dog opened his mouth and in to the mouth went the bird. I was sitting in the row behind, and fortunately, I grabbed the child, the arm, and the bird, and everything was okay. It was kind of a wild moment there. But our pets and all the animals in the world around us, they're sacred, they're blessed, they fill us with such joy and gratitude. They were created by God, and they were called good. They were there before we were and they were good. And on this day, we bless some of them. We bless all of them. This last weekend, it, or week, it was announced the 23 species of animals and plants no longer exist. That's a horrifying comment on our world today. The animals and plants that have been lost to us, they are never coming back. For them, there was no quick hand to save them. Francis stood in front of the rubble of San Damiano, and he heard Jesus say to him, Renew my church. I wonder if Francis was here today. He and Christ might instead be walking along a burned-out hillside or a polluted river. And Jesus might spread out his hands and say, Francis, or us, renew my church. And Jesus would mean the earth and all creation in it. And instead of brick by brick or stone by stone, it would be tree by tree, butterfly by butterfly. And if this was us, and while we were doing this work, we too would be renewed with a sense of respect and care for the fragile but amazing world that God has created out of goodness and joy. A couple weeks ago, I emailed Bishop Greg and I asked if I could use these lessons for the Feast of St. Francis today because of his close relationship with Claire. He sent back an enthusiastic yes. So instead of this morning hearing about divorce from Mark's Gospel, we get Matthew's words of grace and comfort. Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. We are all so very weary. I said a couple months ago that we were going to take these months before Advent and grieve and rest and celebrate. Today is a good day to celebrate. One, to celebrate the animals that bring us joy. If we were to consider them and even imitate them, think about that. To consider them and imitate them, what would that do? Perhaps it would change not only how we care for all of God's creatures, but it would also change us. Theologian Diana Butler Bass wrote this past week, instead of imagining the post-pandemic church as a community of grief and lament, I wish that mainline churches would move toward a pandemic church of gratitude and generosity. We've been so sad, she says, People are aching for joy. I wonder if one of the heavy burdens that Matthew talks about is joy. It is hard to stay joyful because the moment we feel it, the moment we know it, we wait for the other shoe to drop. We know also that since others are grieving, maybe we should join them in their lament and our own being joyful is cruel and heartless. We have been grieving, and we are not done grieving. But we are never called to live in that place. We are called to live a life of joy. I wonder if this isn't an image we might gaze upon and consider and contemplate 
and then imitate. Francis, the voice said, calling him by name, go rebuild my house. As you see, it is all but being destroyed. All you who hear God's voice somehow in the whispers of your dreams, of your walking along on a day outside in nature, all those of you who hold your own pets near and dear, go rebuild my house. As you see, it is all being destroyed. We can hear those words and fall into despair. Or we can live into them by looking around us, thinking about all that we have been given, pondering and praying for all that is, and seek to walk with God in the garden of life that is still all around us. If we are willing to be grateful and find joy in the work that we've been given to do. I pray this week that we too will hear the voice of Christ speak to us and call us to rebuild his church, this world around us, this creation. And in the words of the hymn we love to sing that probably Francis didn't write but are certainly attributed to him, make us a channel of your peace. Where there's despair in life, let us bring hope. Where there is darkness, only light. And where there's sadness, ever joy. Be joyful, my friend. It is the gift we have been given. It is the way and the hope we are supposed to live into imitating Christ. May it be so this day and always. Amen. <laughs>